the property rights of spouses act part three property agreements section 10 agreements in respect of property subsection 1 subject to section 19 a spouses are two persons in contemplation of their marriage to each other or of cohabiting may for the purpose of contracting out the provisions of this act make such agreement with respect to the ownership and division of their property including future property future property as they think fit so they may go to a lawyer and write up a document that says in case that this union is dissolved then so and so might be the case where each gets a share in the property that's different from the half that is in this document in this act right i think that's what they call a prenuptial agreement b spouses may for the purpose of settling any differences that have arisen between them concerning property owned by either or both of them make such agreement with respect to the ownership and division of that property as they think fit so they even after they become spouses they may make their own agreements to each other in terms of division of the, the property um, other than what the what this act says subsection 2 without prejudice to the generality of subsection 1 an agreement may a define the share of the property or any part thereof to which each spouse shall be entitled upon separation dissolution of marriage or termination of cohabitation b may provide for the calculation of such share and the method by which property or part thereof may be divided so they may agree that this part this percentage of share is mine that percentage of share is yours or agree to a formula that may be used to calculate how much each is entitled to all right subsection 3 each party to an agreement under subsection 1 shall obtain independent legal advice before signing the agreement and the legal advisor shall certify that the implications of the agreement have been explained to the person obtaining the advice so the husband and wife cannot have the same lawyer in this case each has to have their own separate lawyer four subsection four every agreement made pursuant to subsection one shall be in writing signed by both parties that means both husband and wife whose signature shall a if signed in jamaica be witnessed by a justice of the peace or an attorney at law b if signed in a country or state other than jamaica be witnessed by one a person having authority by the law of such country or state to administer an oath in that country or state or two a jamaican or british high commissioner or ambassador 
as the case may be, or a Jamaican, or British envoy, minister, charge the affairs, secretary of embassy, or legation, or any Jamaican or British Council General or Council or Vice Council or Acting Council or Council agent exercising his function in that state or country. So the husband and wife may make that prenuptial agreement or the future husband and wife may make that prenuptial agreement or in the case where the marriage is to be dissolved by both they may make such an agreement as to the share of the property but it must be guided by an attorney at law And shall be witnessed by an attorney at law or a justice of the peace. All right. Subsection 5. Subject to subsection 7, which we haven't reached yet, an agreement to which this section applies shall be enforceable, or shall be unenforceable in any case where, all right, these are the cases where this, the agreement is not enforceable. A. Eh? There is non-compliance with subsection 3 or 4. Subsection 3 and 4. Yes, there must be legal advice and the witness, all right? If it's not witnessed by a lawyer or an attorney at law, or if legal advice was not given, where each person as their own lawyer and each lawyer has informed the person of the implication of this decision then that agreement would not be enforceable so in the in a case where you are going to make such an agreement you must have your own lawyer your spouse must have their own lawyer there must be documented documentation to say that the lawyer informed you of the implications of the decision and it must your signature and your spouse's signature must be on the same document must be on the document and it must be witnessed by a justice of the peace or an attorney at law or b where it is unenforceable the court it may be unenforceable B, in case in which the court is satisfied that it would be unjust to give effect to the agreement. Oh. So the judge can just look at it and say it would be unjust and throw it out. Mm. So that is what this section is saying. The court is satisfied that it would be unjust to give effect. To the agreement. Subsection 6. An agreement made pursuant to subsection 1 by a minor and every instrument executed by such minor for the purpose of giving effect to any such agreement shall be valid and effective as if the minor were of full age. So it may be where the persons are from a culture or a religion in which they sign a document, that document, and are married by a priest while they are minors. Of course, the marriage would not be consummated until the age of consent is passed in Jamaica. But in that case, where the minor signs that document, then as this says, this section says, that agreement shall be valid and effective as if the minor were of full age. 
Subsection 7. Notwithstanding subsection 5a, the court shall have jurisdiction to inquire into any agreement made under subsection 1 and may in any proceedings under this act or on an application made for this purpose for the purpose declare that the agreement shall have effect in whole or in part or for any particular purpose if it is satisfied that the non-compliance mentioned in that subsection has not materially prejudiced the interest of a party to the agreement so even though the document is presented in court the judge may see to find out maybe if there was undue pressure by one party and another to sign it or some other um, some other situation it says here the court shall have jurisdiction to inquire in, inquire, in, inquire into any agreement made under subsection 1 it seems that that is what it is saying anyway subsection 8 in deciding under subsection 5 section part B whether it would be unjust to give effect to an agreement the court shall have regards to all right where the judge is going to decide whether the agreement is unjust the judge will look at a the provisions of the agreement b the time that has elapsed since the agreement was made c whether in light of the circumstances existing at the time the agreement was made the agreement is unfair or unreasonable d to find out whether any changes in circumstances since the agreement was made whether or not such changes were contemplated by the parties would render the agreement unfair and un or unreasonable hmm? Uh, e. Any other matter which it considered is re relevant to any proceedings. Okay. Subsection 9. Nothing in the subsection shall limit or affect the capacity of spouses to agree or acquire or hold any property jointly or in common whether or not with any other person and whether legally or beneficially subsection 10 any property to which an agreement under this subsection does not apply shall be subject to other provisions of this act Subsection 11. It is hereby declared that an agreement made pursuant to subsection 1 by persons who cohabit, that means they live together but are not married, shall not be void as against public policy. Subsection 12. In subsection 6, minor means a person who is 16 years of age and over but is below the age of 18 years okay oh so somebody who is 16 or 17 is considered a minor but they can get married and they can sign these documents. So it's 16, 17, or well, 16 or 17 years. Once they reach 18, they're no longer regarded as a minor under the law. We will next look at orders regarding property rights. <laughs>